we're going to be looking at vaccinations because the whole theory, just, just from a real basic level, the whole theory of vaccinations is this. In order for you to not get a disease, you need to be injected with that disease. In order for you not to get the disease, we have to give you the disease. We're going to see, and you do see throughout Scripture, when people are sick, when people have an issue, when they have an issue of blood, when they have a pestilence, when they're lepers, they're unclean. And we can read an entire chapter about leprosy and multiple chapters about leprosy and, and how to diagnose it. And at the end of the day, though, they are unclean. And if they have a fretting leprosy, they have to walk around and, and their mouth is covered and they go, unclean, unclean, so people know that they're unclean and they can stay away from them. Why? Because having a disease and having a pestilence is unclean. Yeah. Just at the very basic level, simplistically, when you look at what the Scripture covers about clean and unclean, are you going to want to, do you think it's right to just start injecting yourself with things that are unclean? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6, you don't have to turn there. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 says, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Now, the context of that passage is referring to fornication. However, that truth still stands. So yes, we need to honor our body. The body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. We shouldn't be joining our body to another person in fornication outside of the rules that God is, has given us. But at the same time, we can take that truth that the body is the temple of the Holy Ghost and apply it to other aspects that affect our body. So it's not just fornication that we shouldn't do because our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. How about polluting our bodies with cigarettes, cigarette smoke? or other drugs, or even alcohol. Now, obviously, there's other prohibitions against alcohol in the Scriptures, but if you just were to treat your body as the temple of the Holy Ghost, hey, there's a lot of things. How about obesity? How about you know, many other things that you say, hey, no, this is the temple of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to keep this temple clean. I'm born again. I'm saved. The Holy Ghost is literally residing inside of you this morning if you're a child of God. Yeah, Are you going to take that temple and say, here, load me up with some disease? Yeah. How about this? Who here believes that God has wonderfully created human beings and everything else that exists on this planet? Yeah, amen. I believe that. I think God had a pretty good plan. When you research and when you look at actual science and biology and anatomy and you look at how things work, isn't it incredible how God has created this system within our body to handle cuts and scrapes and bruises and introduction of infection and, and things that don't belong in your body? I was having a discussion with someone the other day at work just about allergies in general and how an allergy, it's a response from your body when your nose starts running and you start sneezing, your body's trying to expel something. There's something that's detected inside your body your body doesn't want there. So the system that God created in your body is saying, okay, let's flush this out. Let's get this stuff out. It's going to cause you to sneeze. It's going to cause your nose to run. It's going to cause these other things to happen. Why? Because God has just built us incredibly intelligently. And it's a wonder, and there's so many things that, don't e that people, that science today still can't even explain. Like how a baby really is formed and fashioned in the womb. You can observe it, but there still is no, wh what is it that's causing the cells to multiply? Right at conception. What, what's doing that? Science can't explain that. Science definitely can't reproduce that. They could introduce the ingredients for that to happen, but they can't cause that to happen. Right. They fully they don't completely know. So you mean to tell me in God's great creation, in creating mankind, that he's created us so full of flaws 
that in order for a person to have a healthy life, hey, man, when they're a few months old, you need to start injecting them with a bunch of diseases. Otherwise, they're not going to be healthy and be able to live their life the way that they're supposed to. Do you think God is that flawed? That he requires mankind to come along and say, oh, hold on a second here. We need to make an improvement on this process. If you're going to do what's right, we need to load up that little baby full of all kinds of, of filthy diseases yeah, right. to prevent them from getting filthy diseases when they grow up. Crazy. It's crazy. It's great. You know, but you know what? They're not selling it to you like that. Yeah. When you hear me say it like that, that sounds nuts, doesn't it? Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. But one of the big problems is that this science falsely so-called relies on a very false and faulty premise that God didn't create everything, that we've evolved. Modern microbiology starts off with the understanding that everything that came here happened by chance and they believe in this natural selection nonsense that, hey, our ancestor, ancestors are monkeys and we came from these single-celled organisms that just somehow turned into other creatures and crawled out of, of the ooze onto land and, you know, grew wings and started to fly and somehow all of this stuff just happened because, I mean, we're here, right? Instead of just believing... God created us. God designed us. No, all of it, just somehow the, this whole system that we have, the whole ecosystem, internal system, systems within each and every creature that exists on this planet, all by chance. Yeah, right. You fool. 